Look what came out to say hi to me when I got home. It's a bug. Big old bug. I was going to come over here and uh, start stripping down this Waukesha for the salvageable parts. It's got a good fuel or an injection pump and all that stuff on it. Turbo's decent, maintainable. Uh, it's got a thrown, thrown rod, um, busted a hole in the block. I'm sure it could be repaired by somebody who cared to do that, but I just mostly want to uh, strip it down and sell the salvageable parts off of it. They don't, I don't think you can buy, no, you can't buy parts for these anymore or anything like that so um, the company I can't remember the company who bought the Waukesha Dishans. this was diesel engines this was like a, a stationary application for a garbage pump or something like that you know a little four-cylinder turbo diesel um, but you can't you can't buy parts um, new so they'll sell you a replacement engine for sure and take this in on core but they won't let you do new stuff anyway i was getting ready to come out here and do it and then i found these and uh the focus I don't think I want to mess with them. There's none in there. The exhaust is taped. But then there's these guys. And lots of spiders. Those don't really bother me. So I'm thinking there's none in here either. Anyway, I'm thinking I'll wait until it cools down and spray those guys and kill them. And then uh, go from there. It's kind of a bummer. Because I wanted to get that thing tore down and get part of my garage or my driveway back. But it's not going to happen. So, I'll talk about this a little bit. Talked about it a little bit before. This is the 6.2 liter <coughs> diesel <coughs> that I bought to put in the GMC that had the 6.5 in it uh, just before I was ready to put the engine on the stand I needed to get the cherry pack cherry picker back to the guy I borrowed it from so it sits here waiting to be put on the engine stand or for me to for me to build a uh, cradle or something to hold it I just need something to hold it so I can start it and run it and check and make sure that everything's good the 6.5 and the 6.2, well, is the 6.2 so much? I know on the 6.5 the harmonic balancers had a habit of going bad and you could actually bust your crank if you didn't get it replaced because it would wobble and all that funny stuff. Anyway, so I want to check that and then there's a rumor that the uh, injection pump on this thing right here, the mechanical injection pump, may be bad, which is not a huge problem I think I think I'd get a rebuilt one for about four hundred dollars three fifty or four hundred anyway I may leave it naturally aspirated um, I get rid of all the EGR stuff of course but I've got the uh, it's buried underneath tarps things like that I've got the intake manifold turbo got the crossover pipe everything I need for the turbo setup and it will bolt right on here from my 6.5 so I don't I don't know I might just leave it naturally aspirated for the time being it's not a power powerhouse at all um, but it is all mechanical so it would it would probably be okay no engine management to deal with there and the boost on the stock turbo setup is not that big of a deal it you know it would handle it no problem um, I do want to get this 4BT 
magnafluxed and uh, any machining work done on it that I need to do. Of course I would be I'd be agreeable to giving it as a decent core um, to buy an already rebuilt or running seven B or six BT or well yeah six BT or a four BT even. So yeah because that one I've been threatening to put in Sarah's Explorer. We've got a guy who's interested in the Explorer and will give us what we want for it. Um, but it's kind of on his time. He's not buying it for himself. He's buying it to fix the problem and then, you know, sell it to somebody else. Uh, but looking into it, I, I can get the tools that I need to hold the timing um, components still. You know, the, the, the tools that you need to make sure everything stays still while you're replacing the cassettes for a couple hundred dollars. And I think the timing cassettes, the chain from the crank to the jack shaft all that stuff i think uh, the whole kit the timing chain kit is under 500 or at 500 so for 700 dollars of my time to pull the engine swap out the cassettes and there's a couple decent videos that a guy did uh, on youtube he went through the whole series to uh swap those out it looked fairly easy to follow as long as you got the tools and there's one socket, a fairly large socket, I believe, is to adjust the uh, the tensioner on the uh, cassette. That's a larger than larger than average or larger than what I've got anyway socket that I would need to buy, but that's no big deal. So we might do that because Sarah really likes that car. Um, it's paid for. It's you know got a decent engine minus the noise from the timing chains and all that stuff. So we might just do that this fall or winter but i need to get my garage my uh my uh, driveway back so i need to get that waukesha dismantled and uh i'll probably just sell the the block for scrap or maybe somebody wants to use it for building a multi-machine one of those open source multi-machines something like that uh, so we'd be open to that as well i got a lot of engine parts but what i really want to get in here is a 6bt uh, eventually I'd like to put a 6BT in that GMC. Um, there's a couple people on the internet who've done it. I've watched their videos. Looks pretty straightforward. Um, as long as you are aware of the gotchas, you know, the suspension. Some of them say you need a body lift, others say you don't. Um, I've got all the gear I need to uh, interface the mechanical um, engine with the computer control transmission so I don't have to go full manual control on the automatic transmission which will be nice uh, but I'm not opposed to switching it out for like an NV4500 or better you know 5 or 6 speed uh, transmission 4, 5 or 6 speed uh, automatic's fine but I you know I have no problem with the stick yeah what else do I got going on here man I just got so much crap in my garage and it just keeps piling up too we get boxes from stuff that we order and it just gets thrown out here to be put into the uh, burn pile and we don't burn very often. Right now burning's closed anyway because it's so dry and hot. Um, let's see. Could probably get rid of my reloader or at least put it up. I don't use it. I actually have it mounted to this uh, the table on this sawsmith that doesn't have the motor in it or anything like that. I had another one of these that I was given. I was given two of these um, when we bought this house because they didn't want to move them. And the other one worked. And he was using this one as saw parts or parts for that saw. And it was just big and bulky and I never used it. I don't do a lot of woodworking. So I gave it to my now sister-in-law's uh, dad. And he uses it. It was probably about two months after I gave it to him. I was like, man, I should have kept that because I ran into some stuff where I was doing woodwork. Um, I do have, you know, sawzall and handsaw and stuff like that. Um, but it's not, it's not as easy to cut a straight line with those as uh, it would be to just lay it out on that and just zip zip with it. We've got these old uh, dog-eared 
cedar fence posts or fence boards for maintaining our fence outside which I'm planning to get rid of we'd like to go with like a six foot tall chain link fence with the uh, privacy slats or something like that so we really have no need to maintain our current fence so got quite a few of them and I've already measured them out these are going to be the boards for my uh, Kenyan top bar hives that I'm going to build um, they're not going to be the exact dimensions that you see printed out on the internet but I've got a buddy at work who uh, who built a couple and the first one he followed the dimensions pretty accurately because um, he thought it was required and then we were looking around at some videos on the internet and where these hives originated the people would use whatever they had you know so they'd go out if they had a, an area that had a lot of um, thicker stalked or stemmed weeds or even small trees or brush they would strip those down and, and just lash those together it wasn't a super tight fit or anything like that and the bees would go in there um, build their hive and then they would do their thing to seal up the hive the way that they needed it to be and if you look in nature I mean, bees don't expect uh, specific dimensions for um, a hive. You know, bees will build a hive in I mean, upside down bucket. They'll build a hive in a hollowed out tree tree stump or or whatever. So if you give them some place to go and they happen to get in there and take, they'll build a hive in it. And uh, so I'm not too worried about not following the dimensions exactly. They're going to be 42 inches long, front to back. Um, I'll have enough for some top bars on there as well. Plus, I've got plenty of scrap wood from some old uh, waterbed frames and bed frames and things like that that I can make my top bars out of. Um, but I'm just going to experiment with it. Uh, get some bees next spring. I doubt I'd be able to capture a swarm this year. Uh, maybe this fall, but I don't know. I don't know if they'd winter well. I might have to keep them in my garage. But who knows? <clears throat> I'm going to try it because I'd like to get some, uh, eh, probably two or three, maybe four hives here at my house. Um, so the second or third year, we could start getting some honey off of it, some local honey. And then also, um, there's a lot of people that garden in the area, so the bees will help out with that. Not that there's any issue with people's gardens growing around here. They back in the alley here we've got somebody who's got a they're one house down but across the alley from us in the back and uh, their garden is amazing looks pretty awesome then we got a guy uh our realtor actually well he's more than a realtor he's our friend but he's also a realtor and he sold us or act as acted as the buying agent or whatever when we bought this house and uh he's got an amazing garden of course he's you know mr green thumb over there see what else I'm just rambling on at this point my wife's uh, hutch she got from her grandmother or it's her grandmother's hutch on her mom's side is out here it's been in the garage since we moved which was seven seven years ago in june of this year and this is as far as it's moved i moved it out of the way um when i was taking that six five apart and I needed some room here uh, for this and also for the, the weight bench. Anyway, so now it holds my, well, there's a rotisserie there and some canning stuff, but the, I put my welding stuff there. I got some, hey, yeah, nice box of open air 7018s at this point. And uh, that's pretty much it. It just sits there holding that stuff. So I've been thinking, do we refinish it? Do like one of those, um, distressed furniture things or or what my my cousin actually had one not like this but another one where it's got the top hutch in the bottom portion as well and they mounted the top portion up on their wall to give them like two or three feet between the bottom of that and the top of the bottom portion and it looked pretty cool they made it into like a wine bar at their house we don't drink but it, you know i don't know if sarah would be interested in something like that but i just can't i can't see getting rid of it we did try to sell it one point for i don't know just like a hundred bucks to get it out of here but um we didn't progress it or we didn't pursue it very aggressively and uh 
you know, it's probably a good thing. Because I know she'd like to keep it. We'd like to have it in the house, but there's just no room. Our kitchen isn't situated uh, for it. Uh, oh, another thing, my ADD kicking in. The uh, insulation situation and finish, finished state of my garage. Um, I was thinking about just going ahead and doing it sheetrock. But sheetrock's pretty soft, especially in a garage. I don't know if I would do it, but I've seen a lot of people do... Uh, the same type of sheathing that you would see on the outside before you put siding on or that you know the wrap and, and the siding uh, and they do that so they'll do like a particle board or a wafer wood inside and it's pretty durable it'll take paint if you want to paint it uh, so I was thinking about maybe doing that insulating it and doing that um, and I think I think that would look nice and let the temperature stay more constant in here you know, in the winter or summer, because in the, in the winter it just gets so cold out here. And then in the summer, like right now, I've got the front door open on the garage and it's still just ridiculously hot in here. So yeah, that's another thing I want to do. And what else? What else, what else can I ramble, ramble, ramble on about? It's my YouTube channel after all. Uh... YouTube's like my VCR, basically, or what I used to have for all, all my VCR tapes. I would, you know, record whatever I want, put it on a tape, and then put it on a shelf and never watch it again. Uh, but this way, YouTube, I can do it. It's 1080p if I upload it at 1080p or render it at 1080p. And, uh, yeah, I can watch it whenever I want, so that's kind of cool. Um, I've got that old smoker. I've got a couple videos uh, I did just not really a DIYs or anything, just kind of recording my progress of converting a stove to a a smoker. It had some oil spilled on it. So I was a little bit leery about actually using Wow. Actually using it to smoke anything until I checked it out. And uh gonna go fill in for a softball game. Filling in for a softball game. Yeah, someone's missing someone on their team, so I'm gonna go play. What teams? Uh, said it's Angeles team. Okay. Well, All right. Have fun. Oh yeah. Love you. Okay. Christians, filling in for a softball game. All right. What did I do here? Anyway, I was able to check out this thing, and no oil got inside. And what it was is I had uh, some oil um, from an oil change I did, and I set the container on top. My fault for doing that. But then somebody came out here and knocked it over and didn't bother cleaning it up. Anyway, so I still got the smoker. Um, I ended up scrapping the the whole idea of using the oven elements because they were just too slow excuse me and not reliable enough so it if it's essentially a hot plate there's a hot plate wired well it's a top one of the top elements um sitting in one of the burner holder things the annoying pieces of tin or aluminum that you have to uh take out and wash all the time because crap gets down there. Anyway, those are uh, <coughs> one of those.